Hi, and welcome to one of our videos in the DIY range. New Trades Career run courses in plumbing, electrics, gas, renewables, and welding. We've made some general videos for you to help you increase your DIY skills. But if you're looking to become a fully qualified tradesperson, visit www.newtradescareer.co.uk and we'll help you achieve your goals. Hi, welcome to another one of our DIY videos and today we're going to look at your heating system. With winter kicking in and people firing up their heating systems, it's at these times we find out if our radiators are working, they're not working, they need bleeding, they need looking at, they might need some attention. And in this video we're going to help you along your way, give you some hints and tips to get those radiators back up and running again and make sure you don't have to get a costly plumber in. This is something you can look after yourself. Don't forget there are times when you do need an engineer, so go careful, don't start taking things apart, don't touch the boiler and be safe. Today we're going to have a look at radiators that aren't giving out enough heat. Here we're going to have a look at a radiator and the heat problems that we can get with these appliances. Very often we can get cold patches at the top of the radiator, we can also get cold patches at the bottom of the radiator. If it's cold patch at the top of the radiator, this is normally a product of air or gas within the system and it's something that we, that you can cure very quickly and very easily using a radiator bleed key which we'll show you in a bit more detail in just a moment. If the bottom of the radiator is cold, it's usually caused by a buildup of sludge within the system. This sludge is a product of corrosion, it's where the insides of the radiator start to break down, it may be that there's not enough inhibitor which prevents a corrosion within the system and the system then needs to be flushed out, it needs to be cleaned and the system then re put back into the into commission. Now that is something that unless you're competent you're going to need to get an engineer in, get a plumber in to flush the system through, flush the radiators through um, and then to recommission the system for you. Unless you're competent leave that part to the engineers. If the top of the rad is cold and it's full of gas or full of air that's something that we can cure very quickly and very easily. We're going to show you now how to do that. So bleeding the radiator is a nice straightforward task to do and you don't need a great deal to do it. You need a radiator bleed key, you can get these in any DIY shop, any hardware shop, just a small key, get yourself a brass one, they last much longer, they're hard wearing. You'll also need a trusty rag to catch any of the water that comes out of the radiator. As the air comes out, the radiator, depending on how much air is in there, the radiator is going to start to fill up and to warm up. We need to catch that water. So we'll hear the air coming out, the water then will come out, but you want to catch that. It's a possibility that it might have sludge in it, so it might be dark, it might stain, uh, but also it could be warm, so we need to be very careful. Gloves are always a good thing to have definitely the rag and just go in with a bit of care. Again if you're not sure get yourself a professional in to help you. The process is nice and straightforward. First off what we've got to do is identify the air vent on the top of the radiator. It's always going to be on the top of the rad because that's where the air will be bled from the radiator. They may be on the sides, in this case it's on the very end on the top right hand corner. It may be that it's on the back of the panel it may be that you have a double finned radiator, so you've got a, a double panelled radiator, but you may have two air vents. So check the radiator out first, make sure you know where everything is. And like I say, just be sure before you start. If you don't, get some advice first off. In this case, our air vent is on the top right hand uh, side of the radiator. And I'm gonna place a rag just underneath that vent to catch any of the water when it comes out. I'm then going to use my bleed key, it's just got a square hole in the end which will go over the little pin. Now we have to be very careful here, don't turn the pin too much. It's only got a very short thread on it and if we turn it too much the pin's going to come flying out then we've got uncontrolled water coming out of the radiator. It could be exceptionally hot um, and if you're on your own you're going to struggle to get that back in. So only open the valve just enough, just crack it open just to allow the air to come out of the radiator. So simply place the bleed key over the pin and we're going to turn anti-clockwise. And listen for the air. When the water comes out, at that, that point there, we can then turn that shut again, dry off the end and make sure that it hasn't dropped. Let's check that that's closed. If you've got problems on other radiators, then we'll move on to the rest of them and check the entire system. 
So with the radiator bled, the air removed from the system, our radiator is now back up and running, and hopefully yours is too. Once you've done that, check the rest of the system as well. Bleed key, you can go around and check all of those, remove any air, and hopefully you're all nice and cosy, each of your ads are up and running again, and it's something you can keep an eye on yourself. Now that you're warm and cosy, and we've got your radiators back up and running again, don't forget, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and come back and have a look at our other DIY videos so that we can help you along your way.